great idea while you're painting is to step away from your painting for a little while. And when you get back, you look at it and you go, what was I thinking? This dog has one really long straight line right there. Not necessarily an asset. And I look at this and realize that this part should actually come down and become part of that. Just move it. Just because you put it there in the first place doesn't mean it has to stay there. Didn't know that, did you? To get some starving artist brushes and that white nylon, we'll push this stuff around. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more color on this guy. Big puddle. Seems that no matter what the size of the puddle, you always need a bigger one. Yeehaw! Because this is transparent watercolor, you don't have to worry about the work you did before. It's going to show through, even though this is a good bit darker. What's wrong with that picture? Just make it a bigger ear. As much as we pay attention to shapes, unfortunately we tend to ignore the negative shapes, which some back, sometimes come back and bite you in the end. So you need to pay attention to all the shapes. Oop. You paint outside the lines, you've got some options. You can leave it alone, come back and clean it up afterwards after it dries. Or unless the dog is really upset, you just move the lines. He now has a larger ear and I don't care. I don't think he cares either. Although he is looking a little concerned. <laughs> You're gonna have to get one of these if you don't have one. This is a great brush. The Fibonacci size eight, you already forgot. little lesson about the fur on the nostrils, the nose. It starts in the center and comes out to the side, even if they have really short hair. And probably a flat brush would be better at this stage. Growth pattern, growth pattern. My husband said I should have brought Baxter with me today. We wouldn't be painting as much as we should be. <laughs> You need a light touch to avoid having all these stripes.
This guy's going brown. Following these shapes, or attempting to follow these shapes. His nose needs to go darker. Fur needs to go a little darker. I'm going to set him aside for a minute and then um, take some time and, and make his fur a little darker. And through the miracle of modern television, take him out of the oven. <laughs> Darken the fur on this one. His nose could use a little work. And you could just paint the entire thing at one time and then come back and lift the highlights, which is what I often do. The beauty of transparent watercolors. And I don't know if you, well, I've only used a couple of colors here, but I typically use only transparent and very few opaque colors. Um, some that have some opacity as a quality, but as a rule, I teach a lot of students and it's difficult for them to understand why they get mud. I'm just laying this brush and softening the edges. I want to leave the highlight on his nose. It's a little darker up here. I'm going to soften that. Come back, darken these guys a little bit. And then at the base, lift out those highlights. Which again is the reflected light from the surroundings. It's hard for me to paint without making stupid noises, so if you hear them pop out, that's my fault. <laughs> I don't know if you know it or not, but if you put A-G-E on the end of a word, it becomes an art term. <laughs> that was good. I did make a few extra lines on the eyes, but I think that helps a lot. A little bit of green again down at the base. It really helps to pop that out. And the last thing I would do for him is to take a rigger and come back and put in a few directional hair strokes. Not sure. OK, 
guess what colors? Same stuff. The length of the hairs changes also along with the growth pattern and you don't need a lot of the, the hairs to indicate that. So it's really the direction of a few hairs. They're a little lighter where the light hits it in this area especially. But you just hint that that's covered with hair and the viewer really wants to fill in the blanks so you just let them but you tell them that there are a few hairs here and that's the direction they grow and life is good. Those are a little bit long, but you can change those too. He could use some whiskers. And they can be light or dark. And again, it's just essence of whiskers. Most dogs, if you look at them, you don't really see their whiskers much. <laughs> Down here, a few more of the, the longer hairs. Typically, you don't paint with a rigger. You put it down and you lift it. It's more of a dragging stroke, or for me anyway. These show up an awful lot right now because they're wet, but they'll kind of blend in and really just read more as, as directional fur. Although this buckle is made out of black plastic, if I were going to paint that as a metal buckle, I would use some Payne's Gray. or indigo. And you can paint everything but the highlights. And that makes it read as metal. dark in there, leave a little light. And then you're going to come back and just soften the space in between. And i am got that little bit light for this to read properly. So to make that read as metal, it needs to be pretty dark. And water helps make paint actually move. And you don't necessarily want to outline this whole thing. You try to find the areas that are darkest, and in this case here, and even in here for some reason. Close enough for government work. No I'm just putting a little bit of a line on the edge of this collar. I see a lot of 
artists who paint collars and they make them very one-dimensional without that edge. So they really have to have the thickness of the width of that collar to make that read well. He could use a little more tweaking, but I think he's okay, and I think he looks a bit like a, a Labrador.